very good morning our beloved and uh, prospective students today we will continue we shall continue what we have done we have discussed earlier in our previous class today let's discuss let's study about the uh, future journey future story of Sir Edmund Hillary and uh, Tenjing Norgay. Last time we discussed about the declaration made by Roll Edmund Sain, the leader of the expedition. When people argued about the first person among the two climbers, that is Edmund Hillary and the uh, Tenjing Norge, who put the leg first between the two. And they were made such kind of belief that no one had any doubt when uh, Mr. Cecil John Hunt declared that they reach it together. They reach, they conquer the Everest as a team without any doubt all the peoples of the world agreed to his declaration after this let us see let us study about the future uh, journey of life about Edmund Hillary and the Tianjin Norge Sir Edmund Hillary continued his life of adventure climbing mountains and uh, once crossing the Antarctic continent, lecturing and uh, making public appearances, and serving as a New Zealand's High Commissioner to India, Bangladesh, and uh, Nepal from 18, 1985 to 1988. When just after his conquering his grand success, grand victory of over the Mount Everest, Hillary did not stop his journey. He continued his journey of life as a climber, as an adventurer, as a person who crossed the Antarctic continent. These are the major and the very hardship and the very difficult works performed by Hillary. And uh, not only he made his adventures in uh, climbing and uh, in uh, uh, winning other hardship and uh, difficult tasks or activities, he also appeared before huge public gatherings and uh, made lectures, very interesting and uh, very effective lectures. And after this, he was uh, met the New Zealand's High Commissioner to India, Bangladesh, and the Nepal for the years from 1985 to 1988. According to his qualities, his personalities, his performances in many varieties of activities, the New Zealand High uh, Government appointed him and the Countries also accepted him as a high commissioner in the countries of India, Bangladesh, and uh, Nepal. After this, in more than five decades since the first successful assault on what climbers call the top of the world, more than 3,000 people, including Edmund's son, Peter, Norge's son, Jemling, have reached the summit of Everest, while more than 200 people have died in the attempt, eight of them in 1996 expedition that was shaped by a blizzard. After this, he did not stop his works in climbing. More than 3,000 people could reach the Everest, where he and his friend Norge conquered earlier. 
and he assisted and he gave them valuable instructions and the guidelines to reach to conquer the Everest as they did. Among them, his son, Hilary's son, Mr. Peter, and the Norge's son, Jemling, were also joined the expeditions who conquered the Everest. And the more than 200 people died in the expedition. In the expedition. Then, they, uh, how did they lose their lives? A phrase is given here. A phrase is given here. What kind of, what phrase? Shabes by a blizzard. A storm and the thunderbolt storm and a very serious, very serious, very severe storm attacked them and they lost their lives. Today, Everest expeditions are almost a commonplace. It has become a very commonplace, very quite common. On a single day in 2003, one, one eight people were reported to have met it. It was reported that it was reported that one one eight one hundred eighteen people have reached the Mount Everest. Some veteran climbers have criticized the commercialism and the circus, circus atmosphere surrounding surrounding Everest climbing. Some veteran climbers, some noted and famous climbers have argued, had criticized that nowadays the climbing to the Mount Everest has become a commercial purpose, on the commercial purpose. And just like as in our circus exhibitions, circus atmosphere, just for earning money and the fame has become the common common place of such kind of difficult and the hardship climbing expeditions. So we the people around the world should know that such kind of hardship and the uh, difficult task should not be converted to commercialism and the circus atmosphere. Tough uh, robot six feet eight inches tall with a long leathery and a wrinkled face, Sir Edmund was an intelligent but unsophisticated man with tigerish confidence on a mountain but little taste for for men social doings. Sir Edmund's description, his physical description is given here. He is of Six feet and the eight inches tall, and uh, he is not. He was not a very fat and a thick person. He was a very leathery and the wrinkled face, wrinkled as you know, which is becoming uh, fading. Sir Edmund was an intelligent person. He was a man of educate, high knowledge and the wisdom. For many years after the Everest climb, he continued to list his occupation as beekeeper, his father's pursuit, and he preferred to be known as Ed. E D. Here we, uh, we can find what kind of activities, what kind of profession, his favorite profession was taken up by Sir Edmund Hillary. He was interested in beekeeping. He was a beekeeper. As his father preferred it. And his father also wanted him to be known as E. D. I think most of you might have learned the full of full name of this E D. E D E D Ed Ed Ed. His full name is Edmund. Instead of saying Edmund, his father wanted him to be known as E.D. Ed, Ed, Ed. Just like this, he was 
adopted he he adopted his uh, profession as a beekeeper during the southern hemisphere summer of 1957 and 58 a british commonwealth team that included sir edmund cross the antarctic on a over overland route that reversed the south pole in this year 1957 to 58 british commonwealth team uh, selected sir edmund hillary to cross the antarctic on an overland road this is also very hardship very difficult tasks and many famous climbers uh, adventurers and the uh, explorers are there in this world during those days those years 1957 1958 but sir edmund was elected by the british commonwealth to join the to join the expedition for antarctic so he he was a man an extraordinary man his intelligence his techniques his skills all were there in his life so the british commonwealth selected him to join the expedition for antarctic no one had attained the south pole since edmund sen in 1911 and the no one had ever crossed antarctica here his glory his fame is again uh, verified again again supported by these lines in 1911 sir edmund sen only sir edmund sen could reach the south pole no one was there before him and just after this sir edmund hillary also reached the south pole this is a very tough and hardship difficult task in this task sir edmund hillary joined the expedition team and he was a grand uh, he made a very grand success in his south pole expedition also after this in 1960 sir edmund led a highly publicized but unsuccessful search for the abominable snowman abominable a bo mi ne bal snow man abominable snow man is nothing but an unidentified an un identified humanoid you may noid humanoid any male any man which is said to live in the himalayas I think you can understand this thing abominable snowman means an unidentified humanoid animal said to live in the Himalayas but he could not succeed in his expedition in his search for such kind of unidentified animal in the Himalayas after this In 1997, uh, in 1977, he led a jet boat expedition titled Ocean Sky from the mouth of the Ganges River to its source. It was also a very tough and uh, difficult task. He succeeded in this effort also. In 1985, accompanied by Neil Armstrong, the first man to set foot on the moon. Sir Edmund flew a twin engine a sky plane over the arctic and the land at the north pole the north pole was also conquered by sir edmund hillary with the help of in the company of neil armstrong who is famous for 
reaching the Antarctic, I, uh, reaching the surface of the month. In he was in uh, USA. Uh, uh, he was a person of. He was a man of USA, United States of America. And the, most of us know that the first person who put his foot on the moon is Neil Armstrong. He accompanied Sir Edmund accompanied this Neil Armstrong and the, could reach the Arctic with his skills and the intelligence. In the year 2007, he was reported to have suffered a fall during his visit to Kathmandu. Kathmandu, you know, the capital of Nepal. He ne went to Nepal and he fall uh, some unwell. He suffered a fall in Kathmandu. Sir Edmund wrote and was a co-author of 13 books, including No Latitude for Error. This is a book. This is a book written by Sir Edmund Hillary and some other books also written with the help of other authors. That is known as co-author. In 1961, Holder and Holder and the uh, staff told about the Antarctic experience. In this book entitled No Latitude for Error, the experience he met, he found in the Antarctic was given here that is known as the Antarctic experience. He also formed a foundation. He also formed a foundation that is Sir Edmund Hillary Himalayan Trust which raised millions in the bill, schools, clinics, airfields, other facilities for the Sherpa villages in Nepal. What kind of contributions uh, were made by Sir Edmund Hillary? Apart from being a famous, world famous mountaineer, adventurer, explorer, for the benefit and for the welfare of the people, he trust, he made, he established a trust and that trust collected some amounts from uh, philanthropists, some noble agencies and the donors. And uh, with the help of those donors, agencies, financiers, he took up, he undertook many welfare projects or programs. Among those, we can mention that he established, he built schools for children, for education, clinics for treatment of patients, poor and the needy people, poor and the needy patients were treated in his clinics, ER fields, other facilities for the Sherpas, Sherpa villages in Nepal. Nepal is a very backward country, a small country, and uh, he he wanted to give some welfare programs, welfare co contributions to the people of Nepal. For this purpose, he established such kind of schools, clinics, ER fields, and uh, some other uh, facilities also were uh, made available to the people of Nepal. And for many years, Sir Edmund was President of New Zealand's Peace Corps and an important voice in his country's conservation efforts. Not only this, he in his motherland, New Zealand, he uh, established a uh, trust that is New Zealand's Peace Corps. New Zealand's Peace Corps is not a trust, but uh, in the sense of a trust or a club or association, he was the president of the Corps uh, Foundation or Corps uh, Department. And an important voice in his country's conservation efforts. And he raised his voice, he made his advocacy for the conservation and for the prosper prosperity of his New Zealand, of his motherland. Uh, then, Sir Edmund's father and uh, his lifestyle, his father's occupation is yet to be 
highlighted here. Edmund Percival Hillary was born on July 20, 1919 in Taukua, in Takao, near Oakland, the son of Percival Augustus Hillary and the Gertrude Clark Hillary. The name of his father is Parsiben Augustus Hilary and his mother's name is Gertrude Clark Hilary. This our popular Hilary was born on July 20, 1919. Where? It near Auckland. Near Auckland in New Zealand. Such, this is the time period and the particulars about his parents. Then he was uh, he was the he was the first of the two brothers. He had a younger brother name is Rex Ford work on the farm established by his father just for beekeeping activities. Sir Edmund began climbing as a youth while attending public schools in Auckland. In Auckland, he started his education in the schools in Auckland. He went to Auckland University, served in the Royal New Zealand Air Force as a navigator during the World War II. World War II. World War II continued from 1919 and ended on uh, 1935 to 1945. During those, during those days, he was a navigator in the Royal New Zealand Air Force. After the war, he took climbing in, in, in he took climbing instructions from leading alpinist began to specialize in ice climbing techniques climb in the swiss alps and the go to know british mountaineers with himalayan experience he began climbing peaks of more than 20000 feet in nepal as his reputation grew hunt so henry uh, colonel henry cecil john hunt Full name is that I have said. Choose him as a member of the 1953 expedition that conquered Everest. Why did Colonel Henry Cecil John Hunt select him as a member of the 1953 expedition for Everest? He was uh, selected in view of his experience and his skills. Using global positioning, global positioning system equipment and expedition sponsored by the National Geographic Society and the others revised the elevation of the summit upward by seven feet from 29028 to 29035. After when there is the height of the Mount Everest above the sea level was. 20, uh, 29 feet 035 but it was a little uh, decrease uh, it was a little increase from 29 to 28 29,000 to 0, 028 to 29,035 standing above that pinnacle in 1953 was an experience Sir Edmund would recall many times in lectures and the quit conversations. After this, he became the famous, world famous uh, explorer or the climber. Climber, apart from his interest in the development and the welfare of the people, and the other representatives as high commissioners in India, Bangladesh, Nepal. Thus, uh, the world, the whole world around us lay spread 
out like a giant relief mayor. He told one interviewer, I am lucky man. I have had a dream and it has come true. And that is not a thing that happens often to men. He died of heart failure in 2008. Thus he ended his life uh, from his heart failure and uh, his remark is very very important for all of us for all the people of the next generations he was a lucky man i have had a dream he had a big dream a high dream that dream came true in his life and uh, that is not a thing that happens often to men. Such kind of dreams uh, may be had by every person and those persons uh, who have such kind of dreams, high dreams, cannot realize, cannot make real uh, true for every man. Every man is his or her aim in life, but they may hit, they may gain or they may lose. It is not always true that all aims and the ambitions will become true. Just like this, our uh, story ends here and the Sir Edmund Hillary is uh, remembered by the people of this world and will be remembered in the generations to come. So today, let's stop here. He is story that the Shega of a mountaineer and the explorer is finished here and from the next uh, class we shall give you our textual and the non-textual questions okay thank you very much for listening our for seeing our class with my heartiest thanks let us stop here for today